Okay, so my first question is, what does ambition mean to you? To me, it's, um, I, I guess it's, it is the sort of classical um, meaning of ambition, that it's a desire to achieve something. You know, it, it's, it's um, um, a need or an urge to go out there and do something bigger than just everyday life. So are you ambitious? Yeah, very ambitious. Not not so much for myself. Um, I'm quite a. I think I'm sort of quite a modest person. But it's more ambition about what I uh, want to achieve for, uh, for for the business, for the for for the family business. Yeah. Why do you think you're that way? Where did that come from? Um. I, I guess it's 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 very much a conscious decision. It, it's an awareness of what can be done, what other people have already done, and and a decision that's well, if they can do it, I can do it. So I don't need permission from anyone to do that. So I'm just going to get on with it. Where did your where did your interest in wine come from? Um, goes back a long time, back in the in the sort of mid '80s when I was a student at Victoria University in Wellington. I was um, lucky enough to get a job as a waiter at a restaurant called Il Casino, which was legendary in its time, uh, and that gave me that sort of introduction to that combination of um, fine dining, excellent food, great wine, from all around the world. Um, and I think at that point, I, I made the decision that I wanted to somehow be involved. In hospitality, I wasn't quite aware of, of how at that point, but uh, over sort of a, a couple of years, um, it became clear to me that wine was my real passion, and I wanted to be involved in the production of it. Um, and that coincided with me living in the, coming from the Wire Appa and, and seeing those early days of Martinborough, where that was sort of kicking off in the eighties as well, and those sort of first ten years as a fledgling industry, and realizing there was a great opportunity to to be part of that. So how do you go from working in hospitality to where you are now? That sounds like quite a journey. <laughs> well, I, um, it wasn't a straight line, that's for sure. I um, went off adventuring and did all sorts of crazy stuff around the world. Lived in France, lived in London. Uh, I was in the British Army for a few years. Um, but it got to the point in the late 90s where it felt like it was time to come home. So I came back, uh, went down to Marlborough, lived in Blenheim for a couple of years and studied, uh, worked in the wine industry down there and then made my way back over to, to the Wire Upper, to Martinborough and sort of been, been involved ever since. If I asked you to describe the most ambitious person that you know, what would pop into your mind? Um, what would pop into my mind would be someone who's capable of uh, Thinking really big, you know, to be to to be ambitious, you've got to sort of see beyond the the, the boundaries or the borders of, of what we experience um, eighty percent of the time. Someone who can see beyond those, who can visualize or pictorialize themselves achieving something in that space in that realm, and and having the, the courage and conviction to go for it. You know, it's, it's fine to dream. It's you know, it's, it's wonderful to have these ideas and, and, and thoughts, but unless you actually combine that with action and, and sort of take steps towards um, achieving that ambition, then it's just hot air, I guess. I think as, as the world has become more global in the last 20 years, we've seen that we, we can compete, albeit on a, generally on a sort of small scale, but you know, what, what we do here, what we can achieve here is as good as anything else that's going on in the world. We just need to take what we're doing to the world and, and, and show them and demonstrate to them and, uh, yeah claim our place at the table, as it were. We do, we do a fair bit of export. We're in um, China, Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong, Australia, um, occasionally to the US, um, occasionally to the UK, Canada. So yeah, I, I think you know, a big part of my plan is to grow the, um, maintain the domestic, but grow the international. If we're going to sort of build a, a global reputation, then it has to be done on being in as many markets as possible. A lot of the commentary around New Zealand business and ambition is that it's it's really hard because in order to grow your market you have to go abroad when you're still quite small like if you think of Australia or the US people don't start exporting until they outgrow their domestic market and their domestic market is so much bigger yeah and is that something is that something that resonates for you or have you just kind of got on with it um, I've just, I just got on with it, you know, I was lucky I did have the opportunity to um, travel quite a bit in the early days of the company and that sort of you know, gave me the sort of motivation and the confidence to, 
realized that it was it was worth it as an investment you know it's obviously it takes time it's quite expensive but you know if you can if you can persist then eventually you will build enough momentum to just sort of continually add to it yeah i've, I've been lucky enough to work in um some great little domains in burgundy and, and i guess that's the sort of model i can see working um you know where they're quite small they're very sort of family focused they make a limited amount of product but it's really good um, they can get absolute top dollar for it you know hundreds of dollars a bottle um, and that's that's the pathway I'm trying to follow do you talk about these issues with your children does is it something that's ever part and parcel of your conversations at oh, home? absolutely yeah you know so I, I guess I'm sort of trying to I'm thinking into generation intergenerationally these days you know thinking um, you know, look at Chateau de Chem, which has been in yeah, the same family for 400 years. And, yeah, why can't we achieve that in New Zealand? Um, so I want the kids to sort of grow up with that, um, that sort of sense of awareness and that sort of ability to think long, long term. It, it's fine to be ambitious. You don't have to be uh, obnoxious with it. You can be, you know, sort of still re retain that level of humility that's required to, to keep focused. Um, but still set the goals high, set the bar high, expand your boundaries, your borders, and, and just sort of, I guess, relentlessly pursue what it is that you want.